I'm Tim, and it's time to help you choose what's on your table at this year's holiday gathering. Christmas season is here, and what that means is that it's an opportunity to gather with your friends, your family, or your loved ones. Now, 2020 is a little bit of a different year with social distancing in place in most places. Our gatherings this year will be a little different. But in most places, we are still able to have gatherings. So we wanted to give you some nice game options to bring to your gatherings this year and give you enough time to find them in case anything in this video is interesting to you. Now, when I think about games that I would bring to my family gathering, I wouldn't bring my three-hour epic game that I'm playing with my weekly gamer group. I'm going to bring something that is a little bit lighter and easy to teach. So that way we can get the game rolling more quickly people stay interested, and you're still able to maintain the ability to be social with one another while you play. So let's get into our first game. It is Christmas Tree. Um, for obvious reasons, this game is perfect for your holiday gatherings, and it's all around the theme. It's designed by Balaz Nagy. It's a two to four player game. Now the box says the game takes about 30 minutes. Any time that we have played this game, we actually have found it's between 45 and 50 minutes. And if it's your first time playing, I would actually recommend budgeting 60 minutes to learn and play the game. I think it's because it's an easy game to converse over and to remain social over, and it ends up taking longer as a result. Now in Christmas Tree, everybody has a Christmas tree in front of them, and they get a hand of cards that are diamond shaped with a bunch of different decorations that they want to put on their tree. It could be an ornament, a gingerbread man, or a candy. So they're gonna choose one uh, card from their hand to put on their tree, and then they pass their card to the next player, or sorry, they pass their hand to the next player. So it's a card drafting game. The mechanics in this game are card drafting, set collection, tile placement, and simultaneous action. I would tell you that you're gonna love this game if you want a Christmas themed game, obviously. If you don't like waiting in between your turn, this is a great game because everybody picks their card at the same time. So there's no waiting for everybody to go before it's your turn again. So simultaneous action is a big advantage to this game to keep everybody engaged. I would also say that if you like puzzly games, you'll really enjoy this. Now, what is a puzzly game? A puzzly game is a game where there's all these different pieces that you want to fit on a specific space and you're trying to find out how to make them fit best. So puzzly game. If you like that, you're going to love this. All in all, I really do recommend this for your holiday gathering this year. It's not too hard to teach. We did find we have to go back to the rule book a few times for clarifications, but it's not overly complicated. It's not too, too long, and it's just a fun theme. I find that people are really into it when it's Christmas time. They can make their own Christmas tree. is King Domino. Now, King Domino is designed by Bruno Cathala. You may know him from Seven Wonders Duel, and it's published by Blue Orange Games. Now, King Domino is a two to four player game. I prefer it with three to four players because at two players, you have to change one of the core rules. I really enjoy the base rules. Now, I have friends who prefer it with two players, so I'll leave it up to you to decide how you prefer this game. The box says it takes about 15 minutes. I agree. Uh, it generally does take 15 minutes. We have actually played this game now 65 times as a group. And from play 1 to play 65, it's been pretty consistent in the 10 to 15 minute range. Now, at a holiday gathering when people are being more social and you may have to teach the game, you may want to budget 25 minutes just so that we get the opportunity um, to not feel rushed when you're playing the game. Now, in King Domino, you are the king of a kingdom, and you start in your castle, and you're going to take these little dominoes with all these different types of terrains on them in different colors and place them around your castle. At the end of the game, you're going to get points based on all the different types of terrain that you've got grouped together and the crowns within them. It uses the mechanics of card drafting, tile placement, and pattern building. I would tell you that you're going to really like this game if you like a really solid filler game, now, a filler game being something you might start with or end with at the end of the night, it's really, really good for that. Um, if you have people in your group 
that might benefit from learning more or getting their hands on math. Uh, this would be a really good game. If you have some kids there, they're going to learn more about patterns and how they come together. They're going to learn more about arithmetic with addition and multiplication. It's a really good game as well if you're going to your holiday gathering and there's somebody there who just loves traditional dominoes. This is something that'll be a little different for them that you know they'll still be interested in and you can use it as a way to get them into playing the game because hey you like dominoes let's try this um, but it's something that everybody else will enjoy as well it's also a great game if you like easter eggs so hidden things in the art of the game i know one of the tiles is a loch ness monster and a lot of the other tiles have a lot of fun art on them as well so if you get joy out of that you're going to love this game all in all i really recommend this to your holiday gathering because it's easy to play it's easy to teach and it speaks to a wide group of people. This game is a game that comes out pretty much every time we have a family gathering and that's Splendor. Splendor was released in 2014 and designed by Marc Andre. It won the Golden Geek Award in 2014 for the best board game of the year so you know it's good. Um, it's a two to four player game. Now the box says it takes 30 minutes. But what I find is that it just depends on who you're playing with and for how many players. If you're playing with a group of new players. I would budget 45 minutes. That's because the last time that we taught a group of players in a four player game, it took us 42 minutes. So 45 minutes is a good amount of budgeting for setup, teaching, and playing. Now, if you're playing with a two player group, our average time is about 24 minutes, and a four player group is about 31. So even with your experienced player group, I'd budget maybe about half an hour for this game. Now in Splendor, you play the role of a rich merchant who's going to be accumulating resources in the form of these really fun poker chip style coins um, to buy new means to refine and transport jewels through these cards. So every time you collect enough gems to buy one of these cards, you can do so. If you get enough of these cards, you're going to attract the attention of Renaissance era nobles and they're going to come visit you. Here's King Henry VIII. Now in Splendor, the different mechanics are set collection, card drafting, and tableau building. Now tableau building, if you've never experienced that before, what that means is that as the game builds on and you acquire more of these cards, you're going to be able to do more for less as the game continues because each of these cards counts as a jewel of a different type that you're going to be able to spend on things. So that's tableau building. Basically, you can do more as the game goes on and you build up. I recommend this game if you really enjoy Renaissance themed games. I know there's a, a lot of people out there that enjoy the Renaissance as a theme for many different things. Um, this is the type of game that you're going to enjoy. If you're somebody who really likes fun game components, you're going to love this game. Everybody I've ever played this game with loves these chips. They love playing with them and they love being able to use them. I also recommend this game if you're the type of person who likes simple yet deep games. And this is my favorite reason for playing this game. Now, by that, what that means is that it's the concepts are simple and learning the game is simple and the actions that you can take are simple. But the decisions that are made with those simple concepts have many different ramifications based on what's going on in front of you at any given time. So it's not easy to make a full decision and know that you're gonna be making a perfect decision. So it's simple yet deep. Now it's not so deep that you shouldn't be playing it with a group of people that you want to remain social with. So it's not like it's not out of the running for a holiday gathering like that, but it's just deep enough that your decisions require thought. And I really enjoy that because it's easy to teach and takes some thought to play. game is Cabal Up. Cabal Up is designed by Stefan Bogan. It's a two to eight player game, so a really good option for a larger group of people. And the box says it takes about 30 minutes. Um, on average, we generally find it takes us 20 minutes uh, with experienced and inexperienced players, but 
at a gathering when you're teaching new people, I would budget half an hour for this game for sure. Now in Camel Up, each player is a member of Egyptian high society attending the greatest camel race of all time. And each player is gonna to try to make the most money off that camel race that they possibly can by wagering on which camel might win each segment of the race or who might win the race on the whole. Now the camels are these fun little pieces here and they go across the board and when they end up on the same space they stack up on top of each other that's why it's called camel up you get to determine who gets to go first based on the dice that are in this pyramid and they roll out of there so there's lots of fun components in this game too the main core uh, me mechanics in this game are betting and bluffing dice rolling and dice roll and move now i would tell you that you will love this game if you like race themed games that involve uh, wagering or betting in some way if you like a game that has twists and turns at any given time with any given dice roll the whole race can be turned on its head and what you thought might happen is no longer going to happen so there's some really cool twists and turns that can take place throughout this game and i also would recommend this game again uh, if you want to be able to teach math in some way to some of the people that are playing it it's a really good game for probabilities and thinking about probabilities on the whole, anytime we've brought this game out to any sort of gathering with hardcore gamers or non-gamers, we've had a lot of fun with it. So I really recommend it for your holiday gathering this year. So for our last game, I actually don't have a physical copy with me, but I want to recommend it to you anyway because it's a hot new game that's come out just before the holidays, and it's called Trekking the World. Now, Trekking the World is a two to five player game. It says on the box it takes about 30 to 60 minutes. Now, I've only actually played the game online on Board Game Arena, and I really enjoyed it. So I don't have the ability to really tell you how long it takes to play the physical copy. If I'm being smart, I would say budget 60 minutes. Now in Trekking the World, each player is an explorer that starts in a different continent and they're gonna travel around the world to see uh, different uh, tourist attractions and to either pick up souvenirs or take tours um, or play journey cards. Uh, this game, it's I got a chance to play it. It's really, really well done. Um, it's easy to learn. I watched uh, one how to play video and it made complete sense right away. Um, the core mechanics in this game are card drafting, hand management, set collection, and point-to-point -point movement. I would tell you you're going to love this game if you enjoy learning about geography um, and you like being a tourist and learning about different things are around the world to see. And I also would recommend this game if you're looking for this year's kind of hot new game because it's everywhere. I've seen advertisements for it everywhere. It's all over social media and I couldn't resist trying it. And I love it. Uh, so I would definitely recommend it to you for your holiday gathering this year. another episode of what's on your table this weekend you know i really hope you enjoyed uh, seeing these games that you can bring to your holiday gathering this year as much as i enjoyed sharing them with you if you like this video why don't you hit subscribe below and hit that little bell to make sure you get notified every time that there's a new video or join the conversation comment below and tell us what's on your table this weekend